Hello again, my subscribers. Today we are doing a Let's Read. After going through the trio of impractically perfect characters, I racked my brain around what should I do next after going through that sprawling epic? Well, it hit me. Today I'm going to read another one of my own uh, because I like writing and I want to share with the world what I've got. So today we're doing a Wayward Pines fan fiction that I wrote in response to Ben's death in the second season of Wayward Pines. Because the truth is, we don't know how Amy responded when the news broke out. We know how Ben's mother responded, but we don't know how Amy responded. That's what fascinated me. So, without further ado, let us begin. She remembers him. She sits at the kitchen table of her house and stares at the cold meal before her. No one else lives with her, although the house is big enough for two. She is alone. She remembers when they first met. A tall, handsome boy who looked out of place arrived at her school. In truth, he was quite out of place, having come out of a long stretch of hibernation like so many in Wayward Pines. She knew that he would soon learn the truth about this place, but for now, she wanted to know him, and for him to know her. She remembers the first words they shared. Initially, there may have been an early attraction, but as the days rolled by, that became increasingly apparent. Even their teacher saw it during a lecture on human reproduction because she chose them as her models. The students saw it as risible, but she was more accepting of the pair. She remembers the kiss. Standing in the back of the loading van while she stared up at his face, their lips met. Adrenaline rushed through both of their bodies. A precious moment interrupted by an explosion, leaving him scratched and bruised, and herself a concussion. She remembers the first wave of fear. Waking up in the hospital, she immediately worried about whether he was alive, but a great wave of relief followed as she entered his room and saw him awake. She crawled into his bed and lay next to him, there, she wanted to stay for the longest time, and she thought he wanted the same. She remembers his heartbeat. Sitting next to his bed, looking down at him, she told him she wanted to be a nurse. He liked the idea. The sound of the steadily beeping EKG monitor gave her an idea. She moved her body toward his and rested her head against his chest. A smile formed on her face when his heart beat calmly into her ear. She described for him what she heard. I can hear your heart. Even going so far as to imitate the beat with her voice. And instantly, his heart increased in speed. Her smile grew because this was confirmation that his heart beat only for her. She barely remembers the sleep. The headache began, and that's all she remembers. Once the concussion healed, she found out what became of him. A head injury put him into a deep sleep like hers. After recovering, she became the hospital nurse like she always wanted. By then, 
the children took over rule of the adults. She remembers his reawakening. Three years later, trying to act like everything was normal and subtly doing her damnedest to convince him that this was the status quo and all they were to each other was patient and nurse, she referred to him as Mr. Burke. The attempt failed, as she foresaw and she would later admit that it was her fault for not keeping up the charade. He left and discovered the new truth. She remembers that awful day. She tried to keep up with his activities, but work at the hospital rendered it a difficult task. Finally, word got out that he was banished to the wall and overtaken by the abbeys, a monstrous abominations that were once human but perverted into a ruined and terrible form of life. That was the moment her world collapsed, when a piece of her soul was permanently removed. She would never again see his baby blue eyes, feel the closeness of his hunger pang body, or the touch of his lips against hers. Nor would she hear his heartbeat or voice except for those recordings she kept in a safe deposit box. But these weren't the same. They were never the same. These truths, these memories, act as a weight against her head. She buries her face into her hands and cries. The tears splatter on the surface of the smooth table and grow, eventually reaching the plate before her. Yes, she will clean up, but what's the use? The next night will be the same, for Amy Breslow remembers Ben Burke. Thank you very much for watching. Like and favorite the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with everybody you know. Subscribe today and hit the notification bell. I upload every Saturday, or at least try to. Like the Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Tumblr pages. Please stay safe and healthy, and remember, it's chaos. Be kind.